What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy, Be High Radio, shout in. Stepping in the building, I got an artist that's tearing up the streets right now as we speak. Tiana Major 9, what's good with it, sis? Hey, how you doing? Feeling good, feeling great. Now, okay. Tiana, first of all, I know you're doing shows, you're on tour and everything right now. What's good with it? How this road life been? You know what? It's been fun. It's been okay. very, very fun. My first, like, big American tour. I'm mm. having a lot of fun. I'm trying a lot of new food. <laughs> Listening to a lot of new accents. Yeah. Getting a lot of new energy and just... Just, yeah, just singing and just doing what I love. Answer me this, Tiana. Are you based in America or are you still in London? No, you? I live in the UK. Okay. Um, I'm trying to make the move soon, very, yeah. very soon. This year, actually. So, yeah, hopefully soon. What is that like juggling these overseas affairs at the same time? Because, I mean, you jump out the box and you over the seas with yeah, it, making yeah. it do what it's supposed to. Um, I don't know. I feel like I've kind of gotten into my stride. Like, I, I kind of... I'm never on like I'm never sleeping on UK time. I'm always yeah. like <laughs> always jet lag. So um, yes, yeah, pretty easy. I'm always in contact with my team, so it's like I'm here anyway when I'm at the, in the UK. I can dig it. Yeah. Okay, talk to me about "Fool Me Once." Okay, so okay. "Fool Me Once" is um, this brand new EP that is there's four songs. Four songs. One featuring Smino, two CR, two CR, um, yeah. Try Peace, which is out. Okay. Um, and On God, which is coming out soon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a project that I wanted to put out and just um, get people prepared for my album mm -hmm. and yeah, just start releasing music again and just express myself. Yeah. That visual for two seater though, that was crazy as hell too. Talk to me about Thank putting that you. thing together. That was um, oh my gosh, that happened so quickly. We mm -hmm. did that before I got on tour. Mm -hmm. um, shot the video in like a a, a day, literally a couple hours. Mm -hmm. Smino came through and then edited edited it. A uh, couple of days after, oh, and yes, it was out, man. Okay. And it was on tour. Talk to me about just your love for music and how you got into the game. What was yeah. it that made you realize that this was what you wanted to do as a career? Um, I feel like I've had so many different like um, points in my career where it's like, yeah, this is what I need to do. But mm -hmm. my earliest memory of like loving music and engaging in like singing and performing was like when I was five, mm -hmm. um, singing in the church mm -hmm. and just make asking my mom if i could just sing at like cousins weddings mm -hmm. like do you know what i mean like family functions and stuff so yeah five years old growing up in the uk what was that like for you and did you experience any culture shock coming back and forth to the united states at the same time um somewhat yeah i yeah. feel like i i it wasn't that much of a culture shock because we have a lot of like American media and mm. TV shows and do you know what I mean like we I grew up watching American TV okay so accents were like I knew I kind of un I understand a lot of people yeah um food. do you understand me over here of course okay just make a show <laughs> make a show of course um food mm. um so yeah it wasn't much of a culture shock but like going to places like Portland where mm. it's like completely different to yeah. the UK, it's just like, oh, okay, hmm, this is different, this is new. Now creating that music, Rehearsal at Nine, mm -hmm. what was it like putting together that project? Oh, um, that was so fun. We did it with a live band, um, mm. my band, and um, I was performing those songs over, I don't know, probably, probably like two years mm. in the UK circuit, um, just building up my fan base and getting people excited for my music. So when I did actually drop rehearsal at nine, people already knew the songs. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was fun. I, I wrote that with my brother um, and uh, a pr producer I work with called Progression. Okay. Yeah. Was that the first project? Yeah, my very first project. Okay, so what was your mindset going into that first project? Because obviously it got you a deal with Motown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, the mindset was... I just want to show people that I'm musical. I want to show people who I am as an artist, mm -hmm. where I want to go. Um, I want to show them my writing style. I also just want to give the people the music that they've been asking for for a mm -hmm. very long time. Um, I have this song on there called Altitude that for a very long time was like everyone's favorite song for me to perform. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it made all the sense to put it on a project. And Come give it on to now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you said that you was touring and then just performing that record before it even dropped. What was that like with that real grassroots grind building up that fan base? Because see, you know nobody wants to do that. Yeah, they want to yeah, go yeah. straight to Motown. Right. So how was that for you traveling and singing your song and watching that audience grow? It was good. It was fun. I had a lot of fun. I made a lot of friends mm -hmm. and like um, people to this day that are doing really, really well. Um, artists like Koji Radical who's from the UK. There's a 
artist called Little Sims, who mm. was like in the same circuit as well. And um, yeah, it was good because it was like, there was less pressure. Social media wasn't as, it was big, but it wasn't like, Instagram wasn't the thing where it's like, we're on every single day, wake up, look at Instagram, comparing ourselves. Yeah. Um, I feel like there was room and space to like make mistakes and mm. just find your style, find your, your swag. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Try new things out. So um, it was fun. I had a lot of fun in that circuit. Culturally, living in the UK, what is that like being a black woman over there making it do what it's supposed to? Um, I would say it's like being black anywhere. Okay, um, okay. See, I didn't know that the struggle was across the oh, water yeah, too. Hundred percent, hundred percent. My God, I mean, we all have our own individual experiences. Being mm. like, obviously, you're from America, and I'm yeah. from the UK, but being black is being black anywhere. Okay. So, yeah. um. Yeah, that's being black is being black anyway. I don't know what else to say. Those that are getting gay. Like, exactly. No, I'm with yeah. you 100%. So now, what was that like when you linked up with Motown, though? And then what was that whole experience when you realized that you yeah. was about to get signed to a major? And then you're talking about an iconic label at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so as I, as I released my, my project, I did um, a headline show mm-hmm. and... Um, Oh, actually, I'm, I'm skipping some parts. Mm-hmm. As I was doing my projects, the producer that I worked with, Progression, mm-hmm. he had a meeting with my a and r Lindsay, and um, she came to the UK, and they were talking, and he played her some of my music, and mm-hmm. she was like, oh, who's this? And then he introduced her mm-hmm. to David, my manager. Yeah. And then there was, like, a back and forth for a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Didn't hear anything, because... Obviously, they were dealing with whatever they needed to deal with, going mm-hmm. back and forth and having conversations. Yeah. But on the on my side, it, it felt like it was like going quiet, and I was like, oh, like what's happening? <laughs> and then we went to LA. She took us over to LA, mm-hmm. um, met the team, um, used the studio, actually mm-hmm. finished off one of the songs from that EP rehearsal at nine in the Capitol yeah. building. Um, and then yeah, we got signed shortly after, and it's just been go 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 since. With that go, 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 has it been everything that you dreamed and imagined or was it a little bit more wilder? I feel like definitely more wilder. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Like some of the first, the first thing I did when I got on Motown was Collide, mm-hmm. which was on the soundtrack for Queen and Slim Facts. and now Grammy nominated. So Come on. Yeah, like it was up from then. You beat me to that one right there because mm-hmm. that was one of my favorite songs as well. You oh, and Earth Gang you. got on there and went crazy. Thank so I mean, you. talk to me about that song going crazy and then being Grammy nominated at the same time mm-hmm. after streaming millions of times. Yeah, um, that was that was I didn't that was something I wouldn't have expected to happen mm. so early on like being on a soundtrack yeah. being a part of such a iconic classic movie already exactly um and linking up with earth gang as well i remember Come when up. i found them on you well i didn't find them but <laughs> <laughs> when i was introduced to their music on youtube yeah i just saw the video and i just remembered what it was and i was like oh these guys are cool but yeah. i didn't know their name yeah for, so for a very long time like i had like these artists that i kind of I, I've listened to before and I was yeah. a fan of but I didn't know who they were and then I was like you have this video right and mm. they were like oh yeah that's us that's us um, so yeah it was dope to link up with them mm. it just feels like everything just went full circle you know everything worked together when you find yourself being Grammy nominated though what did that do to the ego how did that make you feel I'm still processing it yeah. I'm still processing it um, this is my first time being not being out but like since COVID like mm-hmm. um we yeah. we was Grammy nominated during lockdown, yeah. so we didn't even get to go to the Grammys. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Like I celebrated at home, so I feel like I'm feeling the benefits of it now. Exactly. <laughs> Surviving COVID nineteen, mm-hmm. those last two years have been crazy. Okay. Yeah. How was it for you, and how did that affect your creative process? Yeah, yeah. Um, COVID was tough. Like for every for everyone, everyone knows that COVID was tough. But I think being locked in whilst you feel like your career is just taking off mm. like coming out of soul train yeah. doing um stephen colbert like do you know what i mean doing very very big Thanks. things and then coming to the uk mm-hmm. and then <laughs> you're just stuck here for like two years and it's oh just like God. sometimes i was just thinking oh no like maybe like who knows what's going to happen after covid who knows mm-hmm. if it's gonna go back up there if the fans are still going to be engaged but um we still worked we mm-hmm. put out at sixes and sevens the project we put out another project called major mantras which is mm. an extension with 
extra affirmations and stuff. So mm-hmm. we're still working. Okay. We're still working. Your writing and creative process. Now, do you play music as well? Not yet. Okay, not yet. talk to me. I've been, you know what? During the first lockdown, I was learning. Yeah, why were you jamming during lockdown? <laughs> I was. Oh, okay. I was. Yeah. I was on Zoom with my brother. He was teaching me the guitar. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm still getting into. It. I just I cut my nails yesterday, so I can officially play, play, yeah. and learn as I'm on tour. So mm-hmm. yeah, I was trying to learn during lockdown. When you're writing the music, though, mm-hmm. how do you come up with those concepts and stuff like that? Is that something that you live in, or is it something that you're riding around town and it just hits you? Um, it depends on the day. It depends on the song. A lot of the time, mm-hmm. um, my lyrics and my music comes from my own experiences. Okay. Um, it comes from like conversations I have with other people about mm-hmm. their own experiences, too, but mainly it it always has like a connection to me even mm-hmm. if it's not my exact experience i'm sure it, it's it's always something that i've i can relate to mm-hmm. yeah and inspired by being in atlanta you're running around with one of the biggest and baddest record men that we know yeah. by the name of kadife okay <laughs> got so i know he's got you all <laughs> over the place how mm-hmm. are you loving the city and what has it been like being in the a time listen i love atlanta i've only been here twice it's my second time okay um I had a lot of fun yesterday at the show was great great yeah. energy atlanta streams my music hard and Come heavy on. so that yeah. collab was on the radio full rotation right. that's how i know all about that thing exactly Shoot. so now nah, it's good to be back what is the energy like over here versus the uk is it the same or is it different oh, how's that i'm still trying to gauge it but i feel like i'm noticing that in certain cities like the fans really turn up for the songs they know. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. So it's just made me, like, it's motivated me to make more songs that they know kind mm-hmm, of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but they go in, they really go in. They're, they're very, very supportive. It, they interact with me. I had this song, I have this song called On God that, um, oh. <laughs> oh, no. I don't even want to hear that oh. part. Y'all went there for real. <laughs> okay, now let's be real then, Tiana. Let's go. You've been in here getting your real Atlanta experience, yeah. so. Yeah, yesterday we went we went out. We had fun. Magic City, Tiana. That was last time. Yesterday we went to Onyx. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you run around here the queen of Atlanta now. Come okay. <laughs> Those are staples in the community. Mm. Okay, first of all. Talk to me about your experience inside of those places because a lot of people, when they come to the city and they go into those clubs, mm-hmm. they think to themselves, I ain't never seen nothing like that before in my yeah. life. What, going on? what was going through your mind? Um, so, the first time we went to Magic City, I went with Kadife and okay. Ethiopia. Okay. That was my birthday, like mm-hmm. right before COVID. I had so much fun. I know you did. Um, yesterday, it was obviously a new club, never been there before. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was very interesting, like just going and just like go, being exper- not experienced, but experiencing the uh, another club and just going to this one. It's like okay, uh-huh. everyone has their own, like every club has their own personality. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And the food was great. Mm. Yes, they had like some salmon and some mash. The girls were lovely <laughs> and like they made me feel very welcome. Yeah, I was throwing the money. <laughs> I feel like I'm still trying to like get the hang of it, but yeah, it was fun. I know that's right. Yeah. So now also. How long are you in the States for before you go back? Oh, my God. Until the end of the tour, which is like the end of March. Mm. I think we're going to reroute some of the the um, the shows that we missed, but mm-hmm. we'll see. When you're not touring and recording, what is Tiana doing for it? Sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping, cooking. Yeah. Um, probably in nature. Like, I've been trying to go outside a mm. bit more. Um, when I was in LA before I went on tour, I was making sure to go on hikes yeah. and just be outdoors, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but yeah, sleeping, man. What is it that you love the most about the game and your experiences so far? Ooh, um, just the people that I'm meeting, just good mm-hmm. energy, just learning, listening, soaking in, soak up, soaking in, ah, soaking <laughs> up experiences <laughs> and wisdom. Um, and yeah, just being around a team that I feel like cares for me. As a young girl in the UK, is mm-hmm. this what you envision for yourself? Hundred percent. Okay, but okay. it's like it still feels very surreal. Mm-hmm. Like it's like it's kind of it's borderline scary because it's mm. like this is the stuff that I've manifested. Yeah, but I'm actually getting everything that I've wanted and more. So it's scary, but I'm very grateful. Give all the praise and come on. Thanks. 
what advice do you got for that other girl in the UK that mm -hmm. wants to do what Tiana Major 9 did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my advice is, as a songwriter, um, never be afraid to rewrite songs. Mm -hmm. Like, you could leave the studio and you might think it's a hit mm -hmm. right when you leave. And it might be, yeah. but there's other times where you might need to go back and just tweak it a mm. little bit, if, even if it's the beat or certain lyrics, you know what I mean? There's mm. always something that you can add to just make it better and just hone in on your sound, so yeah. The persistence and just staying down with your grind and your dream mm. and your vision, what was that like when you started to see it coming to fruition being that, you know, it started off as a dream mm -hmm. and now it's something tangible that you live in every day now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what's, what's the question? What was that point when you realized that it was real and it was going down? Oh, um, I feel like I have that all the time. Like, I Ooh. always, like, it always hits me. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Wait, I don't know if I can say <laughs> Yeah, you can say what you want oh. to say. Yes, yeah, I'm just like, oh, like, this is real. I mm. feel like most recently when we got confirmed to go on the tour with Jasmine Sullivan. Mm -hmm. If you know me, I'm a huge fan of Jasmine Sullivan. So we all are. Yeah, yeah. Like, so to be uh, uh, right on her tour, supporting her, like that's always been a dream of mine. So yeah, that was one uh, instance where it felt like, okay, this shit is really Similar off. to Jasmine Sullivan, Tiana Major Nine likes mm -hmm. to sing, mm -hmm. okay? So talk to me about y'all being able to just, you know, see each other and talk to each other about the music yeah, as yeah, well, yeah. and then also being some real singers. Because you got a lot of folks out here that's singing out the top of their damn nose, yeah. and they ain't singing, okay? Y'all get out there and really sing. So what is that <laughs> like for y'all? Um, it's, it's a lot of hard work. Mm. Um, I've been doing like vocal training mm. over the past couple years and like more so towards um, getting on the tour and being prepared for the tour. Mm. Um, just like making sure my vocals are in, intact. Um, I did like some movement, like um, not classes, but we did some movement. Okay, now you gotta get rehearsal. your two steps together. Right. Okay. Yeah, we're trying to, we're trying to be the super groove. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of prep preparation for like the music side and um yeah moving. have you been able to pick jasmine's brain and get some game from her not yet not okay. yet because okay. it's quite strict with covid restrictions oh so my I know. god it's damn covid oh god i'm over it exactly I'm actually over it come but on see we spoke briefly i feel like as the tour goes on we'll see each other a lot more mm -hmm. um and have more time to really sit down and, and talk but she's lovely what is the workload like for you? Because a lot of times I meet a lot of artists and they say, mm -hmm. hey, man, I didn't think I was going to be working this damn hard when I got in here. No, for <laughs> real. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a lot, but um, it all makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. I'm seeing that everything has, a, like, a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, every content piece we put out has a purpose mm -hmm. and it has a job to do. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a lot, but I'm prepared, you know. Being somebody that's in the industry now and you're coming across all of these different people, who has laid the best advice on you? Ooh, I don't know. Ooh, the best advice. Mm -hmm. I would say, I would say I, one piece of advice that I always remember was from when I was studying music. Mm. Um, and my tutor said that if you forget the song, like if you're writing and you forget the hook or mm -hmm. you forget a part of the song, it wasn't strong enough. Mm. And I hear it like, if I forget my hook mm -hmm. after I, like I've written it and I'm just like, okay, let me go in the booth and I can't remember the melody. Mm -hmm. It's just not strong enough. I and, feel that. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I, I, I carry that every time I go into the studio. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lastly, Tiana, is there anything that you want to tell your fans? And is there any, and how can they contact you? Listen, you lot <laughs> can get at me on Twitter, Instagram, at Tiana Major 9. I'm always like replying mm -hmm. and, you know, interacting with you guys because you guys have been a great support, especially in Atlanta. Big up the A. Like, mm -hmm. next time I come here, I have to spend a little bit more time because yeah. I'm always in and out. But <laughs> big up the A. Like, you lot turned up yesterday for me That's and awesome. Jasmine. So, yeah. I can dig it with yeah. Tiana. Thank you thank so much you. for coming through this thing, thank sis. Wish you nothing but the me. best and much success. Thank you. Be already yo shouted. Tiana Major Nine. Holla at y'all in a minute, man. We go.